said there's a restaurant down the road and he's making a lot of money so I want to move into that business because you might not be good at the restaurant the restaurant business right so you have to yeah, find uh, a business or, or or just find out what your passion is and then pursue that okay no, now, I want to understand what what's actually holding you back from actually following up or starting that restaurant or the import business or what's no, holding you back is it finance or yeah, it's finance yeah right okay and it's finance because at the moment I, I know I can do anything, right. but thing is uh, I'm just short of finance. That's the only thing, and I'm I'm working at the moment. Right. Okay. And uh, got not bad job. It's quite good, but still, all the time I think is to have business, and mm. that's all the time I talk as well. Mm. But I don't know if uh, lack of I don't know if there's something which is not letting me do a business. Which then one thing is finance, right. obviously. I think Caroline maybe can help us out here because she's she specializes in in the personal side and and uh, positive mental okay. mental attitudes at NLP and stuff. Is that correct? So, so you can probably no, get into focus on the area. Only thing is finance would work. But can I listen? Um, should I hang up and listen mm -hmm. to you? Mhm. Mm Carry yeah, on. I mean, so the only thing I want to ask, um, as you mentioned, NLP, mm -hmm. but NLP and at the moment. Nothing motivational, nothing NLD, this sort of thing, definitely not going to work. But at the moment, I just only want to is start. And um, that's, uh, the thing is, if any, like any, let's say any banks and any other financial institutions, mm -hmm. are there any institution, those who can mm -hmm. help? Because I know it's like credit crunch and this sort of thing, and they are very careful as well to okay. help people as well. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, is there any advice I'd, that we can I'd give like him? To, or? I'd like to yeah. give him some advice. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen then to you. Then. I'm just going to finish the call and then listen to you. Okay, okay. that's great. Um, whatever is going on in the external environment of you, it's a reflection of what you're feeling inside. So if you feel low value or low worth in yourself, it will be reflected. So you have to work on yourself so that you will attract finance. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, so he's, he's, just, he's just listening in. So, ah, yeah. right. Okay. So it's, it's really important for you to establish what's going on for you because whatever you're seeing in your external world, it's a reflection of what's going on in your internal world and what you're feeling and thinking. And if you think you're not good enough to get that finance and there's like this little inner voice talking to you saying that you're not good enough, then you won't get the finance. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to look at your own behaviors and your own thought patterns. And um, it's much closer than you think because there are habits and there are behaviors and we don't recognize them until they show themselves on the external world. So you'll be able to see what's going on inside when you see what's happening on your, ex on your outside world. Excellent, excellent. Can I just make a comment on that as sure. well to yep. just support what uh, Caroline has just said. Um, in my experience and my understanding of the world, mm -hmm. uh, Making your business work is not to do with money. I would say 99% of it is about confidence. And uh, if you have full belief in your ability, which goes back to Caroline's point, the different way, which is that if people believe in the confidence that you have, and you genuinely have that confidence and ability, then it will come across, and whatever money you want to raise would be at uh, 50 pounds, or be at uh, 50,000, or be at... Uh, more than that going up to Millions. half a million or a yep. million. Uh, it's all possible. I've seen people that uh, got um, no business plan, no nothing, but you have got the ability to, ability of conviction. Mm -hmm. So if you've got the conviction, that's the first thing which Caroline has said. Mm -hmm. um, so that other viewers who've got a in general interest in raising money, mm -hmm. there are lots of avenues in terms of raising those funds. What I'll do is just to give you a quick checklist of what you can do to be able to raise funds. Mm -hmm. um, literally, I think before you do anything, you've got to be very clear about what is it that you are trying to do. So you do need to desire, have an understanding of a concept and end goal in what you're trying to do. So if you are trying to build an aluminium scrap business, for example, is what you mentioned, mm -hmm. then the question is what sort of turn turnover are you looking to get? You know. You know, what's your strategy? 
who you who you're gonna where you're gonna buy it, where you're gonna sell it. So does he need to put a business plan together first before to just clear his mind and say, right, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, this is how I'm gonna do it. Well, there's t two aspects to that. Or, two answers. or he doesn't need a business plan initially. Two just a just a quick summary, just notes. No, no, two answers to that. One is that uh, if he's got the conviction mm. and a full business plan, then it's very difficult to actually be in a position where you can't get what you want. Mm -hmm. If you've got a business plan which is on the conceptually written on a piece of paper which you understand mm -hmm. and you know is strong and mm -hmm. you the argument to actually for to be invested in is strong enough, then just that can suffice. Mm -hmm. um, in our business with the consultants that we have, we worked in both extremes. Mm -hmm. So the danger is also that if you go overkill on business planning mm -hmm. six months or something and spending a lot of money on a business plan, yet then don't take any action at the end of it because the market changes by the time you spent actually doing it. That's right. You just got to be very careful to mm -hmm. find a balance between have, having a business mm -hmm. plan and taking action as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, it's very interesting what you said. Uh, I know a lot of business owners, I, you know, I'm talking from just corner shops to big businessmen, they find it very difficult to just sit down and just put their idea in writing. That's one, and there's a lot of good, you know, there's people out there that are really good at writing, but they just don't know how to implement the plan. They can write fantastic business plans, but they just don't execute the plan. Okay, well, this so is where, the, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I think this is where I would say to you, the depends on what level you are at and what you're trying to do. Generally speaking, if you are at level, let's say, just starting off, mm -hmm. trying to get to the next level of actually starting something, then if you got big plans mm -hmm. and you're looking to set up a half a million or a million pound turnover business, and yet you haven't got the experience behind right. you or the knowledge, yet you've got the conviction and right. you may have some aspects of the jigsaw or ability, mm -hmm then most definitely having a consultancy or somebody who's, I mean, you don't necessarily have to be us. It mm -hmm. can be somebody respected within your circles who's able to mentor you or guide you mm -hmm. because you could literally save hundreds of thousands, even millions of pounds by having the right people working with you mm -hmm. to make sure that if the part of your jigsaw is missing, they can fulfill that jigsaw mm -hmm. piece for you. So if yeah. anyone wants to start a serious business, they really need to consult with a company like yourselves, like UNB. And well, you, I, I, you guys can work with them from, basically from their personal side. Yeah. Like Carolyn can work from the personal side and sort out their personal issues. That's right. And then another consultant can focus on their IT side, another consultant can focus on their financial. So effectively, they would have a team in their business. Yeah. They're not a one-man band anymore. They've, they've got yeah. a team behind them. I mean, the other point I'd like to make, I think that's yeah. very correct, I, yeah. I would say, just to reiterate that, the difference between us and any other consultancy yeah. out there yeah. is that we are very personal. Mm -hmm. The you actually means we actually literally like to get to know people, mm -hmm. and if somebody is genuine and very clear mm -hmm. uh, about what they're doing, and we can see the potentials, we will you know, give them our time mm -hmm. and help them. And sometimes you do have clients that have no money. Mm -hmm. uh, we would give them tips or advice, so we mm -hmm. don't to say no. We don't want to meet with you because you've got no funds. Mm -hmm. We try and help and give a free consultation to people sometimes that have those sort of issues. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, we tend to work with people that have already they they've got some sort of clarity by working mm -hmm. here with Caroline, and then they come to us mm -hmm. and say to us, "Look, I need some help." Mm -hmm can you give me some uh, direction mm -hmm. and if, if they haven't got funds then sometimes we'll work out a proposal with them but on the whole we do get companies or individuals who've got a budget and they know more or less what they want and we're able to cover nearly every sector mm -hmm. and able to encompass key components that they need in their business to be able to get them to move forward so it could be that mm -hmm. they're fantastic at marketing but as yet they're not very good at setting up the systems in the back end like their operations or their finance or their HR or their yeah. legals. So we are able to, with our 60 associates that we've got, we can actually mm -hmm. slot in 
anybody to actually give you the potentials actually moving forward. So you, you basically provide a personalized service. It's not like, okay, these are the charges and that's it. Yeah. You work with them, you say, okay, you don't have any funds right now, we'll give you half an hour, did you say? Half an well, hour. Typically we have an hour, an hour consultation. An hour, for, so you give free. them a free sort of, yeah. um, just to get to know you, you get to know them, give yeah. them a bit of guidance, and if they like it, then you can sort of personalize a plan around that. That's like right. a pay plan, say, okay, this is how much you can pay us.